Hello everybody, this uh, is a video lecture on advanced web search topics. So in class we went over some of the basics and in Blackboard over here we've got I've got a bunch of links. Some of these we went over in class. The first two videos um, we went over and we talked a little bit about the invisible or deep web. What I'm going to do is go over some of these other videos and I've got them here. Um, the first one is the basic search help and this are, these are some of the concepts that we went over today. Keeping things relevant, uh, how to retool your search query, going from puppy to Dalmatian puppy training class, being more specific, as specific as possible, using uh, different words instead of my head hurts, headache, something that's more likely uh, for the page that is the search result to have the answer on it and that's kind of the mindset that you need to go about when doing Google searches instead of uh, really focusing in on your question sometimes you need to think about well what does my answer look like and uh, what what content is going to be on that web page search for that and you find your answer uh, some of these uh, other concepts uh, common words that are usually ignored um, but it is very important to know that they're not always ignored so you can see here uh, the search for the who the band versus who uh, is going to retrieve different results up next is the web search results uh, overview and then what I'm going to do here is just do um, We'll just do a quick search to get this in real time as well. So, as always, we've got our Google bars at the top. I happen to be logged in, so it shows uh, my Google Plus info. If I have any notifications, my profile pic. If you're not logged in, it won't show you that. Below that, we've got our, uh, our kind of refinements here. Some of these we talked about. We talked about going to search tools limiting the time, limiting the reading level results or nearby search. We'll hit back on that in a little while. We've got our results here on the left. Now I happen to be logged in on my personal computer and I use a piece of software called Evernote which can tie into my Google search results. I'll close this out for now, dismiss it. Typically unless you're using the Evernote software you're not going to see that. Uh, this on the right is one of the newest pieces of Google search results and that's called the knowledge graph. Uh, depending on the content you're searching for this can come up with some very interesting content. Uh, they do talk about the knowledge graph a little bit on this page but there's a completely separate section about it which I recommend you checking out if we go look at the knowledge graph. You can see all the different kinds of things that will be on there. Tons and tons of data. Uh, Google is creating almost a completely separate system to add additional value to your search results. So now you can see here's a search page. We do not see ads at the top. We do not see ads on the right. Switch back to my search for shoes. I've got this uh, kind of orange tan color. Those are ads. People are paying for those advertisements to appear at the top there. And I've also got more ads here on the right. So there are dedicated sections of your search results for ads. I am pulling in a little bit of um, not necessarily knowledge graph but uh, particular information. Are you looking for shoes? Are you looking for places to go shop for shoes? Here's a map of places near you. Scroll down. Here's my typical result. The, the pieces that we're used to seeing on a result. But then also this looks like with location based results could be very useful to you. So here's some actual locations. And again, this is going to show up depending on your search result. And we can see that specifically on the map. Scroll down. You can see a video result. A pretty funny video if you haven't seen that. Um, and then at the bottom we move into our related searches. Really pay attention to this when you're doing your research. This can really help you um, move along the path from research question to great search query. Maybe there are words that the web uses that you're not thinking about in your research question. 
these related search results, Google can do a lot of the work for you. Um, and then of course we can go through the next pages. Uh, more and more search results because we're only showing 10 at a time right now. We've got advanced search and search help. The search help is where I'm finding all of these articles that I've linked in Blackboard. There's some tremendous knowledge out there in the search help. So that's the anatomy of the search results page. Well, that's the knowledge graph. We've already talked about that. Okay. Now, your textbook talks about something called Boolean operators, Boolean logic. And um, Boolean logic, simple example, I want to search for shoes and athletics. So if I want to search for athletic shoes, I want to search for a particular type of shoe, uh, I might search for shoes and athletics. The thing to note is that every space in Google is essentially an invisible and. So if I type shoes athletic, that is searching for shoes and athletic. So it's got to have both on the page and you can see the search results there. Another Boolean operator is OR. So I can change this to searching for shoes or athletic and I'll get a very different uh, set of search results. Shoes are still coming up. Athletic.net. So as I get further down I might get into something that's more uh, let's try something a little more specific so I could say soccer. If I'm looking for soccer cleats shoes soccer or soccer shoes would be a good query but shoes or soccer now I'm getting soccer news soccer.com places I can search for soccer apparel learn how to play the game completely different search here so we've got and or another one is not so maybe I want to search for shoes I don't want any soccer shoes and the way to do this in a Google search is to use a minus sign. You can see here uh, on the uh, search operators page we've got exclude a word. So if I put a minus sign or a hyphen in front of a word it'll say I'm gonna find you stuff with shoes and it's not gonna have soccer on the page. I don't know if Zappos does not sell athletic shoes but um, it looks like they do but maybe they don't sell soccer cleats. They certainly don't label it on their page. Another important search operator for Google are quotation marks. So if I search for shoes soccer, it has to have these words together. So not only do both words, it's searching for shoes and soccer, but it has to be shoes soccer specifically. They can't be at different places on the web page. They've got to be right together. And so you can see here in the title, shoes comma soccer, right there, shoes comma soccer. If I change this maybe to soccer shoes, I might get a different result. I think soccer pro wasn't my number two. So depending on the order of your words, when they're in quotation marks, that's going to matter a lot more. Scroll down a little bit more. We get into some more advanced queries. This one is very useful when you're doing research, and it's the site colon. So maybe I want to search for soccer, uh, but I want to search for it under edu. What this is going to do is it's going to find sites that have soccer on them, but they have to be a .edu address. I could get more specific. I mean, I could search for is there any soccer at rappahannock.edu looks like we don't have a lot going on so you can get very very specific with that and that's very handy when doing research you want reputable information maybe a .com site isn't going to do it for you maybe a .edu site will depending on your search result you can see here uh, maybe a .gov or a .mil if you're doing research on a foreign country doing uh, research on Japan, you can do a .jp and it'll search for Japanese-based pages. 
very, very handy. I'm not going to go through all of these. You can um, look at them uh, individually offline. So this is from the search operators. Now, I did add this page because on the whole, punctuation doesn't really matter when it comes to Google search uh, queries. But there are some exceptions, and that's a list of them here. Uh, usually a plus sign doesn't add anything, but depending on what the search query is, uh, for example, AB+, Google+, uh, the at sign. Anyway, I'm not going to read this to you. You can kind of see these examples. If you include these punctuation marks, they are going to influence your search query, whereas other punctuation marks uh, might not. And then the final one is actually a really cool page. Uh, the tips and tricks page. That would be search tips and tricks. You can do some really cool stuff with Google search. Uh, there's a reason they are still the leader in web search. Uh, if you have a Google account, you can check out web history. This is Google web history. If you have a Google, Google account, you can turn this on. It's not on by default. But you get some really interesting information. Let me expand it just a little bit. So over the past, uh, it's a little over two and a half years I've had this turned on. I'm approaching 13,000 Google searches, which means on average I'm doing about 15 searches a day. Uh, but if I scroll back, there are days that I don't do any. So I have some days where I'm completely offline. I don't get on the computer. I have other days where I do more than 100 Google searches in a day really interesting data. What days are most popular for me to use Google? What time of day? Since you guys are students, uh, you might be using that 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. time a little more than I am. And then finally you can come back through here and see the actual search results that you are... Uh, these are the searches that I did yesterday, that I did the day before. Uh, really interesting. Note, uh, privacy setting, only you can see your history, so I'm sharing mine with you, but by default you wouldn't be able to see it unless you were logged in as me. So that's something pretty interesting. Um, I'm sure many of you know most misspellings don't matter to Google. Uh, you misspell something, it will search for what it thinks that you want anyway. Very handy. Again, look at the punctuation. These punctuation marks on the whole, not going to matter. File type, something we haven't talked about yet. If I go back to Google search, and maybe I want to learn about soccer, but I want to look for a presentation on it. PPT is the file extension that most presentations are made with. This will only return back to me PowerPoint files, the new PowerPoint file type, PPTX. Notice it returns both PPT and PPTX. I could do this for PDF. I could do this for an audio file. No wave files. Let's try maybe .mov, more common file type. Got a couple. And so you can limit your results based on the type of file that you're looking for. Conversions. Very handy piece of Google. Again, we'll try this one out. If I want to know how many miles are in a kilometer, and you can see here some of the ones that we can do. Uh, what's 143 miles, 233, or 230 kilometers. Pretty cool. We've got a ton of things here. So how many bits are in a byte? How many gigabytes are in a petabyte? There's a lot. Switch that to, oh, I'm in bits, sorry. Let's do bytes. And there you go, you get precise conversions. This is handy. We talked about uh, the sources and dictionaries in our class earlier this week. Use the define colon. Pop us right up with the definition.
and I do want to spend some time on the image search. So let's go back to my search for soccer. And I could say filter out, I only want to look for images. My search tools change when I go from searching the web to searching for images. Uh, and this is very handy. So I'm looking for high quality stuff, two megapixels or higher. So now I'm only looking at high res images. Color is a really cool one. So uh, filter this by red. And now all of the images have a predominant red in them. File type, am I looking for players? Am I just looking for pictures in general? Uh, animated, so an animated GIF. Or do I want a line drawing? Time is one that we're used to. And then the more tools just has the result to show the sizes. So really cool, depending on the type of results I want, I can uh, filter those results even more. This can be really handy when you're trying to put together a presentation and you've got a design or a color scheme that you want to make sure you stay within. Uh, we can do some pretty advanced math in Google. So tell me what this is. Google's got a calculator integrated with it. You can see the kind of functions that it's got inside of it. Some location-based searching. So let's see, I'm at, let's just go back to Google. I'm at Glenn's today, 23149, I believe. We get an outline of what this entire zip code entails. Add a little context. And I get a piece of the knowledge graph. That's what this dark piece is here. What's my food in this zip code? What's it rated? Pulling in a lot of contextual information now. It's location-based information. It's reviews. Uh, and then we can plot it on a map. Very, very cool. Reading a public domain book. Again, there are so many different things. Um, Google has so many different projects here. If it's in the public domain, I can actually go in and read Moby Dick right online for free. So check these out. I mean, there are just, this is quite a long page. If you've got uh, something that you're interested in uh, or just want to see what kind of cool stuff you can do with your everyday Google search, it's pretty interesting. So that's our lesson on advanced searching. Check out the links that we've got in Blackboard and have fun.